Hey friend, David sang, I'll sing praise to you, O Lord, among the nations, and I'll sing praises to your name. Psalm 118, 49. Now the original Hebrew word there for praises is zamar, which means to sing and play a stringed instrument. Paul quoted this verse when he wrote, he also came so that the Gentiles might give glory to God for his mercies to them. And that is what the psalmist meant when he wrote, for this, I will praise you among the Gentiles and sing praises to your name. That's Romans 15, 9. Now the original Greek word there for singing praises is the solo, and it has the meaning of striking the strings and making them vibrate, to twang or gently vibrate. However, it's also inclusive of the element of singing while playing a stringed instrument, such as a harp or guitar. The emphasized Bible says, For this cause I will openly confess unto you among the nations, and unto thy name will I strike the strings. Yes, yeah, strike the strings. So what's interesting here is that that person playing the guitar and singing is not David. David wasn't speaking of himself because he was at the end of his life, and the next account after this is his last dying words. He could not hope to praise God among the Gentiles. David is speaking of Jesus, the Messiah. These words are the words of Jesus singing to his father. When Paul quoted this lyric of David's song, he too was referring to the Messiah. What is being said here is that Jesus desires to reach beyond the Jewish community and to lead non-Jewish people to receive the mercy of God and then express gratitude and praise to God. And he wants to lead them with his guitar and singing worship to the Father. Wow. Two things to note. One is that Jesus the Messiah wants to save all ethnic groups and bring them to his Father. And he wants to share with all humanity the love that he has for his father. And secondly, he wants to share with them the joy of connecting with his father in musical worship. Jesus wants to lead them all in worship while singing and playing the guitar. Don't you love that? One translation says, for this, I will acknowledge to thee among the nations that I will play on the harp to thy name. That's Romans 15, 9 again. Now these scriptures encourage us several ways. Number one, inclusivity. They underscore the inclusive nature of Jesus' mission. He seeks to extend his, God's mercy and love to people of all backgrounds, breaking down ethnic and cultural barriers, and encourages us to do the same. Number two, Jesus shows us the importance that he places on not only worship, but corporate worship. He desires to lead all people groups in heartfelt worship, both instrumentally and vocally. And so we should have the same priority. Number three, unity. Jesus' mission is to unite people from various backgrounds in worshiping the Father. This encourages us to seek unity among ourselves, regardless of our ethnic background. Number four, evangelism. The passage highlights the evangelistic aspect of Jesus' mission, to bring the message of salvation to those who have not heard it yet. And so we should do the same. And number five, joy. The idea of Jesus leading people in joyful worship encourages us to find joy in our relationship with God and to approach worship with a heart filled with gratitude and delight. So I want to encourage you to follow Jesus' example and embrace inclusivity, unity, worship corporately, evangelism, and joy in your Christian walk, following the example Jesus set for us. Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior, our guitar-playing worship leader. God bless.